Praise the name of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. That's a beautiful morning. Amen. Was a quite challenging evening, <laughs> but this morning we woke up to a very beautiful morning. While we were driving here, we were looking at the trees. My wife was trying to video you know, the branches of the trees where you know, the snow turned into crystals. It was beautiful. It reveals the wondrous works of our God. Amen. So this morning we're celebrating uh, Palm Sunday. Yes. It's Jesus' triumphant entry to Jerusalem. Yes. And we know what happened, what transpired that day. People uh, took some branches and they were just waving and praising God and glorifying the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is what we're going to do this morning in commemoration of Jesus' triumphant entry to Jerusalem, we are going to praise and worship Him with all our hearts. I would just read one verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31. It says, whether we eat or drink or whatever we do, we do it all to the glory of God. Whatever we do, we eat or we drink, we do it all to the glory of of God. I was trying to meditate this verse uh, last night and somehow it dawned upon me that when we, after God saved us, He gives us a new purpose. Yeah. Yes, yes. Our life has a new purpose. When we accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, our life now becomes an instrument in order to glorify God, in order to display His power, in order to spread his fame in order to build his kingdom this is the purpose of our lives now according to the verse and it transcends our earthly life if we're going to do this this will somehow outlive our temporary life here on earth and the bible is saying that all that we are and all that we have is god that's why i was thinking this morning we should change our perspective Instead of focusing our burdens, our needs, our sicknesses, our challenges, our problems, we don't all have these things. Amen? Amen. It's taken care of by our God anyways. Remember that verse in 632 of the book of Matthew that our heavenly Father knows that we need all of these things. Amen? He will take care of us. That is why this morning, instead of focusing all of these things, let us change our perspective and focus our attention to God in order to glorify Him in order to praise His name we should love the Lord this morning with all of our hearts, with all of our soul and with all of our minds after all, God seeks those kind of people that will worship Him in spirit and in truth and this morning we will just lift the name of our Lord we will just glorify the Lord Jesus Christ Hallelujah Father in heaven this morning we come before you, Lord, and we are so thankful, Father, for your goodness in our lives. Thank you, Lord, that we see your wondrous acts, O oh Lord. And this is the reason why our hearts are flowing with praise and worship. Because truly, you are our God. You are our creator. You are our maker. You are our savior. You are our healer, Father. You are what we need this morning, Father. We just have to come into your presence with our faith, Lord. And we claim this morning, Father, that you will move in our midst and you will minister to the needs of your children, O oh God. Lord, we are so thankful for all these promises, O oh God, that you've given to us, Lord. And we claim all these things this morning. We claim salvation. We claim healing, Father. We claim miracle, O oh Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
acknowledge you is the only true and living God who sits upon the, who sits in the heavens and makes earth his footstool. We bless your name forever and ever, oh God.
That was the week of preparation. And I challenge you this morning as we prepare to celebrate one of the greatest sacrifices ever given to humanity. He who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might have right standing with God this morning. Listen to the word of the Lord. The, the psalmist declared a messianic psalm, Psalms 18. He said, I will love you, Lord, for, O oh Lord, you are my strength. For the Lord is my rock and my fortress. He is my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I trust. The Lord is my strength. He is the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. And I will call upon the name of the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. This morning, somebody lift their hands and say, Hosanna. Lord, save us. Hosanna. Glory to God in the highest. On earth, peace. Goodwill towards men. Hosanna. Lord Jesus. We're open this morning. We want to bless your name. We're mindful this morning that he who knew no sin became sin for us. And Lord, today, we are the redeemed of the Lord. We say so this morning. We have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And Lord, as many honored you that day, 
We honor you, Lord, this day. We give you our praise. We give you all the glory to your name this morning. We, we bless you, Lord, at all times, and your praise shall continually be in our mouths. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord this morning. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me this morning. For I've sought the Lord. He has heard us and delivered us from all of our fears this morning. Without hesitation or reservation, we declare this morning, come on, that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let's give him a clap offering today. Let's bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, I want to say Hosanna. And um, we have many people today who are not here because they have no electricity. We're getting phone calls. Pastor Mike and many up in Colony have no electricity. So I want to thank God that I have electricity. And I want to thank God there's electricity in this house. Would you go share with somebody this morning and just declare Hosanna this morning. God save us. God bless you. God bless you this morning. Hallelujah. I love the Lord for he is my strength. Hallelujah. Lord, you have given us the shield of salvation. Your right hand has held me up. Your gentleness has made me great. And you have enlarged my path under me. And my feet will not slip in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, if you're watching why by the way of the internet this morning we want to say a welcome to you i know there are people in different countries watching and uh we have some people here in our church who are in florida i pray it's nice and warm down there in florida hallelujah but you know isn't it crazy we just had we just celebrated the first day of spring and we get a snowstorm uh, out where we live um, out in the mountains just outside the city roads were closed trees were down uh last night we reported coming home um, cars on the side of the road in ditches, all kind of stuff. But thanks be to God that he has kept us safe. So somebody say Hosanna. Hosanna. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, they all left. I must have said something personal. Okay, hallelujah. If you would show that video that we sent, and I'm going to turn this over to uh, Pastor Don, you're taking out the offering today. Amen. Send it to you. Okay. Pastor Don, you want to come up? Because I, I guess they don't have the video. Hallelujah. It was sent to the media team and to Pastor Don or Dan, whatever your name is. Okay. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning again, everyone. Good morning. We come to the part of our program where we give whatever our hearts committed to the kingdom of God. And just before that, uh, I would like to uh, call on our ushers to prepare. And also, uh, we can give like um, two ways. We can give to our church app center. Uh, and also, um, if you want to give here and you're looking for an envelope, we have our ushers. You just raise your hand and they're going to come to you and give you that envelope. If you're giving a check, don't seal the envelope. I just want to read um, Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. It says, But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. This is a beautiful verse and a beautiful promise from our God. But this morning, I just want to explain the verse in the context of what happened during that time. Because many times we would declare, we would pronounce, this promise to anyone in any condition. But the context of this verse really was about giving. Apostle Paul commended the brethren at Philippi because they gave in order to meet his needs. This is what it's all about. And in, in chapter 16, 
it records Apostle Paul's ministry to uh, Philippi and there were three notable things happened there. One was the conversion of Lydia that was the Macedonian call in, in chapter 15 and the other one was the deliverance of that damsel from the evil spirit and the third was the conversion of the Philippian jailer. It's very popular and with this background we can understand how the, the brethren at Philippi uh, committed themselves to the work and of the kingdom of God. However, uh, this verse in chapter 4 and verse 19 was part of that letter by Apostle Paul to the brethren at Philippi because according to him, they provided his needs when he was ministering unto them. He was traveling that time and he came by Macedonia and into the city. And even after his ministry in Philippi, when he moved to Thessalonica, he said that you continued supporting and uh, providing my needs. And he said, not that I desire a gift from you, but the fruit, the result of whatever teaching I imparted to you. And then the promise, according to him, that my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory because of your faithfulness in giving. That is why in the context of these uh, verses from verse 10 to 20, this verse 19 is about giving, that if we give unto the Lord. In fact, there is a description of our giving here in verse 18. It says, but I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of sweet smell. This is the first description of our giving. To God, it's an aromatic odor or smell. A sacrifice acceptable. That's number two. A sacrifice acceptable unto God and well-pleasing to God. He is so pleased whenever we give unto the cause of His kingdom. And the promise is very clear, according to the Bible, that God will provide all our needs according to His riches in glory. I'm calling all answers, and let's pray for our giving this morning. Father in heaven, we thank you so much, Lord, for your grace, which enable us, Father, to give into your kingdom. We know, Lord, that everything that we are and everything that we have is from you, Lord. This divine enablement, Father, you give to us when we accept in you as our Lord and Savior. And Lord, we are returning the part that you've given us to your kingdom. Bless everyone, Father, this morning. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Okay, let's play that video. The next day, the great crowd that had gathered heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. This crowd praised him. They celebrated his miracles and with great expectation told everyone about him. But they did not know him. They were waiting for someone who would rule with strength and might, but he came as a humble servant. They wanted him to finally bring their people glory, but he wanted to change them so their lives would bring God glory. They were expecting a general who would crush their enemies, but he came saying, love your enemies. They thought he could offer them deliverance from their oppressors, but he came offering deliverance from sin. This crowd would soon realize that Jesus wasn't going to be what they wanted. And they turned on him before they ever realized he was what they needed. So as they yelled, crucify, Pilate asked Jesus, are you a king? Jesus answered, I am not that kind of king. His kingdom isn't what you see here. It won't be established by chaos and war. His kingdom is in our hearts. 
His kingdom is truth. His kingdom is goodness. His kingdom is righteousness. He is the humble king, the king of healing, the king of forgiveness, the king of love. Today, we lift our voices. We cry, Hosanna, save us. Save us from our sin. Come dwell in our hearts. Hosanna, we worship you. Jesus Christ, our King. Hallelujah. Hosanna. Hosanna. I want to encourage you. We have a bulletin insert that says, Love is alive. And you can take this. I'm going to challenge you to give it to some person this week. Invite them to church. Um, Easter and Christmas is a, a high feast day for us, high celebration. And so people are open at this time. So take a chance and invite somebody. And next Saturday, we're going to be happy. We'll be sending a text out, feet on the street. Um, thank God we didn't have it yesterday. We were supposed to. Uh, but it didn't work out. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We were home snug as a bug in our rugs. Hallelujah. So I'm going to have a word of prayer with you. I want to encourage you this day to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a very important city in the Bible. It actually is a place, a geographical place that God chose for himself. By the way, Jesus Christ was crucified on Golgotha's hill in that city. But when the Son of Man returns, he will be returning to that same place, the city of God. In the sides of the north, Jerusalem is the city of our God. So we're going to pray this morning for many, many different things. But let's pray for the peace of Jerusalem, what's going on in the Middle East. You can see the world is in deep conflict, amen. You see what's happening in Russia right now. And um, this is in fulfillment to what our Savior said would happen before he would return. Wars, rumors of wars, all kind of natural diseases and pestilence and ecosystems being destroyed. It's happening in our generation. It is possible. It is possible that the Messiah could return soon. Somebody say, Hosanna, hallelujah. Let's go before the Lord this morning. Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful day. Lord, as those who live within this nation, we pray for America today in the name of Jesus. We are open and honest before you, Lord. We need a revival. We need an outpouring of your power in your presence. Lord, you said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked ways, that we will hear from heaven. So, Father, I pray for the gift of repentance to be poured upon every born-again, spirit-filled believer, Lord, that there'll be nothing between our soul and our Savior in this hour. We, we do say, Hosanna. Lord, you have saved us, you are saving us, and you will save us in that day. But Lord, this day, we need a fresh encounter with your power and your presence. Lord, not just in a corporate meeting, but even individually. You said if we seek you in secret, that you reward us openly. I pray, oh God, that there'll be a revival of prayer within each individual life, within families, Father. And Father, may it overflow into the house of the Lord that the prophetic word will be fulfilled, that my house shall be called the house of prayer for all nations. All nations, we pray in the name of Jesus. Father, start in Washington, D.C., so broken, so paralyzed, so partisan. We pray, oh God, we know that we have peace through the blood of Jesus Christ. We speak the efficacious power of the blood of Jesus over Washington, D.C., Lord, what political things cannot do to bring unity, we pray for an outpouring of revival, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, that the blood of Jesus would bring peace that passes understanding to Washington, D.C., we pray, O oh God. Pray for our president, vice president, uh, all those senators and congressmen, those involved with the political process. Lord, we ask you to come and visit that city. We know that, it, that the policies of that city affect nations, even in a global sense. So we humble ourselves before you, Lord, and we say, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, come once again and bring a revival to America, we pray. And Father, I pray for the Empire State. Lord, we need thee more than ever, O oh God. I pray for this governor, Lord, who has, Lord, in particular, set policies uh, against the preborn, uh, 
Oh, God, I ask you to visit her in a powerful way. Uh, the legislative branch right down the street here with the senators and the assemblymen, we pray for an awakening, oh, God. I pray that it will be heralded around the nations that God has visited Albany, New York. He's poured his spirit out. And even the way they make policy and they set the law forth, it is in a biblical way. It's in a, a Christ-centered way. We pray, oh God. Lord, I know it seems impossible with man, but with faith in you, you said everything is possible. In you, we can run through a troop and, yeah, even jump over a wall in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray for the city of Albany. The city's also been so broken, Lord. We pray for a great renewal. I pray for every gospel preaching, praying church in the city, oh God, that you would unite us as one church, no longer would we be divided by denominational things or ethnicity, social, economic status, whatever it might be. But Lord, we ask you to cause us to be the firstborn church. Lord, I, I think of Paul said that we are the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven and who have no confidence in the flesh and we worship God in spirit and in truth. Father, would you do that right here in this city? I pray you would touch every person that's involved with making policy. Father, whether it has to do with a library or a school board or a council, whatever it might be, that, Father, it would be heralded around that God of heaven has visited Albany, New York. Father, we humble ourselves and ask that today in the name of Jesus. And, uh, Father, I do pray for families that several are sick today we lift them up we curse that spirit of infirmity and sickness command it to go in jesus name and we call healing in the manifestation for those that are part of this house today in the name of jesus and father you've taught us that delay is not declined with you and so we thank you and we praise you and we bless you and i pray oh god that as we are preparing for next week uh, that every believer within this house would let their light shine and, and open up and just share Christ, oh God. You said you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and ye shall be my witnesses. We pray for the fulfillment of the witness of the body of Christ to emerge, oh God. No longer the silent majority, but every man and woman, no longer ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but, but declare that it's the power of God and the salvation. Father, we have many nations that we relate with. We pray, oh God, your blessing. I want to thank you, Father, for taking care of us in Jesus' name. You have been so kind, so loving. And Lord, I, I do pray in Jesus' name as we approach this week of preparation that our own hearts would be prepared to once again receive you as King of kings and Lord of lords. We announced this morning, oh God, that that there's no other name where we must be saved but that name, that name of Jesus. And Lord, you have so highly exalted that name that it's a name above every name. That even at the mention of that name, knees bow, tongues confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We declare Jesus is Lord over our lives this morning. We declare Christ is Lord over our families this morning. We declare that Christ Jesus is Lord over this house without hesitation or reservation. We say, Hosanna, come, O oh God, visit this vine. I think of Psalms 80, Lord, where the psalmist cried out, and uh, Lord, you, he said, Lord, cause thy face to shine upon us once again, and we shall be saved. We are that, that vine that thy right hand hath planted, O oh Lord. Come and strengthen us. Come and, uh, Lord, cause us to be prosperous in Christ this morning. Lord, we want to glean the harvest of this region in Jesus' name. We pray for wisdom. For each of us this day, you said if we lack wisdom, we can ask you. And you will not upbraid us, but you give liberally to us. Lord, we want that wisdom that comes down from above, that's full of the peace of God this day. And I pray that we would have the power of a well-timed word, Lord, as we share the good news of Jesus Christ. And Lord, where could we go this morning, but you have the words of eternal life. We bless you, Lord. We give thanks with a grateful heart today. Father, we're so thankful for the Word of God. You've revealed to us in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus, we're so thankful that you are the will of God in action this morning for each of us. I pray for that fresh anointing, Lord, as our brother comes and shares from the Scriptures today. Uh, anoint our eyes with that spiritual eyes. Have. Open our ears up, O oh God, that it would go beyond just perusing the intellect, but that we might become those living epistles 
known and read by everybody this morning in the name of Jesus. And Father, we're so thankful. We declare this morning that we are blessed. We are not cursed. We are blessed of the Lord. We are blessed. We realize that we're not problem free, but Lord, you have given us a supernatural innate ability to triumph over evil because we're blessed this morning. Hallelujah. I declare my family is blessed this morning. Can I get anybody to agree with me for your family? I declare my family is blessed this morning. Yes. I want to declare my body is blessed this morning in Jesus' name. I want to declare my marriage is blessed this morning in Jesus' name. And Father, whatever we put our hand to, we ask you as you are leading us and we're following that leading, that it become evident that the Lord of hosts is with us and the God of Jacob is our refuge this morning. And we bless you. In Jesus' name. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so excited in this house. We have so many great preachers. And I'm going to ask Pastor James if he's going to come up today and bring the word of the Lord. Uh, we love him, love his family. He can be intimidating because he's so much better looking than me, but I've had to learn to live with that. Hallelujah. And so... We want to come and pray for you. I'm so thankful that you're here today. Thank you, Jesus. Would you like to use this? This is okay. Would you put your hand forward? We're going to pray for this man of God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for our brother. Lord, he's been faithful in the house of the Lord, him and his family. And pray, oh God, that he has certain dreams. And you've taught us that delay does not mean decline with you. But we just pray, oh God, that as he's in this transitional time himself with his family and their new home and all of that, that you would hold his feet to your path, oh God. And Father, the blessedness of the family that you have given him and now grandchildren, may him and his wife enjoy the fruit, Lord, that you have given them. May they have no stress, but may they have a peace upon them that passes all understanding. And Lord, I pray we put a demand upon the anointing within his life that word dwells in him richly. And Father, we, we ask, oh God, that as he speaks, that it will go beyond just ears. It will go right into our heart. You said, let the word of Christ dwell, dwell in you richly. And Father, we claim that promise as the man of God speaks the word of the Lord today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. I receive it in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, Joshua, can you give me that branch? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful day. And uh, I'm so excited about the new members of the choir. Can we give a big round of applause? Hallelujah. <laughs> Welcome to the crew. So today is the Palm Sunday. And we are so excited to celebrate it. And you know what? I have been uh, uh, celebrating the Palm Sunday since my childhood. And uh, with enthusiasm, excitement, and uh, we did a lot to celebrate it. But you know, um, after years and years, I could actually understood what is the meaning of uh, Palm Sunday. And especially, what is the meaning of the Palm Sunday in my life? Why we celebrate this? And we will today Honestly, I will try to make it clear what is the meaning of the Palm Sunday. Are you ready? Hallelujah. And this video was powerful. Thank you for showing that. And uh, meaningful. I remember that uh, um, I was watching TV and there was an advertisement. And uh, a lady was running and uh, she could not run because she had a parachute behind her 
strings and parachute and she she is trying to run and run and run and run but some force is stopping her sometime we think that we are free but without jesus without salvation we are not free hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord uh pastor said that uh, i'm beautiful <laughs> by <Bye. laughs> but i wish i had the hairs like him <laughs> so you are more beautiful and we are so thankful that uh, we have this wonderful man of god amongst us i have learned a lot from him and can you give a big round of applause for him <laughs> hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord so can we stand up and uh, once more we will say hosanna hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord hosanna to the son of david blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest blessed is the king who comes in the name of the lord peace in heaven and glory in the highest hallelujah 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 you may be seated hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord so i would like to read uh, uh from matthew chapter 21 from uh, verse 1 to 10 and you know the importance of palm sunday is if you read the synoptic gospels and the book of john and you will see that uh, one miracles is in the one gospel and you will not find that miracle in the other gospel but this incident is in all gospels so that is important the purpose of writing the gospels by the inspiration of the holy spirit is to describe this event so that that was the important event and sometime we celebrate palm sunday as a ritual oh palm sunday is the start of the passion week is the start of the holy week and we celebrate the holy week and then everything is gone so what is the meaning of the palm sunday why we have been celebrating for 2000 years what is the meaning so i will start uh, with matthew chapter 21 verse 1 to 10 as they approach approached jerusalem and came to beth phage some people say beth phage i don't know what is the proper pronunciation um beth phage came to beth phage and its meaning is house of unripe figs and beth phage was uh, uh, near bethany the little town and these two towns were 2 miles away uh, from jerusalem on the mount of olives jesus sent two disciples saying to them go to the village ahead of you and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her untie them and bring them to me if anyone says anything to you say that the lord needs them can we say the lord needs them 
द लॉर्ड नीड्स अस कैन यू से दैट द लॉर्ड नीड्स अस ओके एंड ही विल सेंड दम राइट अवे दिस टूक प्लेस टू फुलफिल वट वॉज स्पोकन थ्रू द प्रॉफिट से to daughter zain see your king comes to you humble gentle and riding on a donkey on a colt the foal of a donkey the disciples went and did as jesus instructed them they brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them cloths on them for jesus to sit on a very large crowd spread their clothes on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road the crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted hosanna to the son of david blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest when jesus entered jerusalem the whole city was stirred confused purples and asked who is this the crowd answered this is jesus the prophet from the nazareth in galilee hallelujah so Jesus went to Jerusalem and this time Jesus went to Jerusalem publicly announcing to everybody that I am coming and if we read the gospel and many people knew that Jesus is coming and they were eager to welcome him they were very fond to see jesus who is jesus who can raise the dead people who can uh, heal the leper who can uh, heal the lame so they were very very excited and they came out of the city to receive jesus christ and you know jesus was preparing himself for this event and before that jesus told his disciples many times that i will go to jerusalem and they will persecute me and they will give me cross and i will die for all of you and john in john chapter 10 verse 17 to 18 it says the reason my father loves me is that i lay down my life only to take it up again and no one takes it from me but i lay it down of my own accord i have the authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again this command i received from my father you know in urdu there are many poets and they do the poetry and uh, i am against of that kind of poetry you too they should not yeah you know what they what they do they said jesus the circumstances are against you the father is angry with you oh your fate is not good this is in the poetry and that is absolutely wrong why because it was the plan of god hallelujah and it was the will of jesus christ it was the will of jesus christ that's why jesus has to 
go there. And Jesus has the authority to give his life and take it back again. And nobody can take the life of Jesus unless Jesus is giving. Why? Why? Because you and me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And you know why Jesus is coming to Jerusalem to save us. And Jesus had passion for that. That's why we say the passion of Christ. The passion means, it does not mean the suffering. The passion means the desire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The passion means the desire to save us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And for that reason, Jesus many times cried. When he came near the place where the road goes down to the Mount of Olives, I'm reading from chapter, uh, Luke chapter 19, 28 to 41. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyf uh, joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. And Jesus said, I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it. Jesus cried on the city because of their condition. Today, Jesus, those who are away from God, those who have no experience of salvation, those who have not given their life to Jesus, Jesus has still the same pain. For you, those who are watching, I want to tell you, if you are hearing this message, if you have not accepted Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, this is the time. Not harden your heart and give your life to Jesus Christ. So, Jesus had the passion and has the passion for all of us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, it was the first month of Jewish calendar, Nisan 10th. The passion week starts and uh, Jesus is the mediator of the new covenant. And his blood speaks the better word. Hallelujah. So that's why, because every year, every year in the temple, they sacrificed the lambs, bulls, but they had no permanent salvation. But Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God. You know, when John saw him coming towards him, he said, look, this is the Lamb of God who gives his life for the whole world, who saves the whole world. Hallelujah. So Jesus Christ came and went to Jerusalem to save us. Praise the Lord.
so in hebrews chapter 7 uh, chapter 5 verse 7 says during the days of jesus jesus life on earth he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from the death and he was heard because of his reverent submission praise lord and jesus christ loves you i want to tell you today jesus said that because he did not recognized because they did not recognize who visited them and many times jesus wants to visit you jesus wants to knock at your door but you don't recognize and light came into the world and darkness could not com comprehend it hallelujah so it was the fulfillment of the messianic prophecy zechariah chapter 9 verse 9 says rejoice greatly daughter zion shout daughter jerusalem see your king comes to you righteous and victorious lowly and riding on a donkey a colt a foal of a donkey so some people say that because jesus came because jesus had to fulfill the prophecies yes this is true jesus has had to fulfill the prophecies but i would say jesus had to come that was that is why the prophecies were said before that is the difference you understand what i said so prophecy was the confirmation that jesus will come and rescue the world praise the lord so many time jesus knocks the door are we ready to open our doors hallelujah so why jesus came on the donkey why not the horse i was teaching uh, in a sunday school downstairs and i asked the asked this question and children said we don't know because might be they they have not heard why jesus was on the donkey so the tradition was when someone comes on the horse he comes to fight and conquer that's right when somebody comes on the donkey he comes to save and have fellowship and have peace so jesus chose donkey because he want to conquer the world by love hallelujah this video was wonderful powerful and we saw that jesus came to conquer the world by by you say by love hallelujah so if we read uh, first uh, kings chapter 1 uh, verse 33 when um, when david uh, proclaimed solomon as a king he said to them take your lord's servants with you and have solomon my son mount my own donkey and take him down to gihon hallelujah so that that was wonderful and uh, jesus came to save us for for everlasting life 
everlasting life. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. So, if we read uh, Zechariah chapter 9 verse 10, it says, I will take away the chariots from Ephraim. So, there is no need for this. Because Jesus' weapon is not chariots, but love. But love. Because he crossed all the limits of love. Who will say on the cross when the nails are in the hands and the spear struck in the rib? Who would say, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they are doing? Jesus Christ told us what is love. How you can conquer the world. That's why Jesus said, if someone slap on one side, give to other. So, and the war horse from Jerusalem, because there is no need for war horse. And the battle bow will be broken and, the, and he will proclaim peace to the nation. He will proclaim peace to the nation. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from river to the ends of the earth. And today I want to tell you, Jesus is reigning all over the world into the hearts of everybody. And those who even do not believe in Jesus Christ, they know that Jesus Christ is the King of Peace. Hallelujah! They know that Jesus Christ came to overcome the world. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! And Revelations chapter 12 verse 10 says, Then I heard a loud voice in heaven, No have come the salvation. No have come the salvation. Salvation have already come. The thing is, you will just believe in Him. Take your salvation by believing in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The verse says, No, have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of His Messiah. Hallelujah. For the, and very good reason is here, for the accuser. Who is the accuser? Devil. Who is the accuser? The law. The law is accuser. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before our God day and night has been put down, thrown down. Hallelujah. Glory to Lord. Glory to the King of Kings. Hosanna. Hallelujah. What is the meaning of the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Hosanna to Jesus. He is the perfect sacrifice without blemish, without sin. Hosanna to the Jesus. Hosanna to Jesus Christ. Conqueror of the sins. Conqueror of the death. Conqueror of the grave. Fulfiller of the law. Greater than the yearly sacrifices. Greater than the temple. Greater than the high priest. Greater than the better covenant. And greater than everything. And he 
has the better covenant than the previous one. And he will judge the world. He who is the bread of life. Who is the way and the truth and life. Hallelujah. So, he is the light of the world. And as we were discussing that, many houses has no light. And many people are stuck in their houses. And you know, in my house, a tree fell down. And thank God, we are all safe and nothing bad happened. But it is God who saves. I, I was uh, in uh, Stacy's home. I'm, I'm so happy about Stacy that she was the part of uh, the choir. So uh, we were watching uh, a testimony. There was a person who was a comedian in the Hollywood. And uh, he was a very famous person. And uh, he makes people life, uh, uh, laugh. He makes people happy by, by his jokes. But inside, he was not happy. He was not satisfied. He was disappointed with his life. And uh, he said that uh, in my family, my family is um, under great depression. And uh, my one brother committed suicide. My another brother uh, tried to commit suicide. And I was not happy with my life. And then he said that, I encountered Jesus Christ. And uh, somebody brought me to Jesus. And I gave my life to Jesus. And when I gave my life to Jesus, I have peace in my life. And uh, he was giving his testimony. And uh, uh, he gave his life and he got baptism. So... So Jesus Christ came to save us. Jesus Christ came to rescue us. So sometime our agenda is different and God's agenda is different. When Jesus Christ came to Jerusalem, you know what was the agenda of uh, people? They thought, as we saw in the video, that they thought that they... Uh, Jesus will rescue them from the clutches of uh, Roman Empire. And God had not that agenda. And sometime we come to church and we bring our own agendas with us. Okay, God, I'm coming to church. Give me the car. Give me the job. Give me the money. Give me the house. If you are giving me, okay, I will follow you. If you, if, if you will not give me, then my name is Jimmy. <laughs> so, we have our own agenda. But God's thoughts are higher than us. Right? And Jesus came to to rescue them from devil, from sin. And Jesus wanted to give all of us the everlasting life. Hallelujah. So, these branches, these branches have a significant meaning. So, This represents the life. This branch represents the life. And when you honor somebody, 
you can wave the branch to honor him if we read uh, uh, numbers chapter 13 verse 23 we read the use of the branch when they reached the valley eshkol they cut off a branch bearing a single cluster of grapes two of them carried it on a pole between them along with some pomegranates and figs who were they they were 12 spies they went to the other country to see their prosperity and they cut the branch of the grapes and fig uh, pomegranates and they brought it back and they said that this is the life this is the prosperity and the branch represents the life and the prosperity hallelujah and uh, in in the temple on the walls there are the images of the branches and that represents the prosperity and life around all the walls of the house he carved and engraved figures of cherubim and palm trees and open flowers and inner and outer rooms first kings chapter 6 verse 29 so the branches they these branches these prosperity this goodness they put on the feet of jesus christ hallelujah the branches the clothes this coat upper upper coat this is my coat i we i will wear on the top which is the most beautiful maybe i will wear something Uh, which is not good which um, which my coat can cover it my jacket can cover it but i will wear on the top a good thing and people put the good thing under the feet of jesus christ hallelujah so it is the honor if we uh, read second kings chapter 9 verse 13 they quickly took their clocks and spread them under him on the bare steps then they blew the trumpet and shouted jehu is king when they when they welcomed the king jehu they did the same thing and uh, we welcome jesus with the branches with our clothes what what is the clothes which is hiding us covering us maybe the branches what is the place of the branch it is it is grown on the ground or at the top where at the top what are the things on the top maybe our pride maybe our righteousness maybe our education maybe our ego maybe our unforgiveness but if we wanna humble ourselves and all the things we think that this is valuable for me this is very important for me i cannot leave my ego i cannot leave my my education i cannot leave my proud but what i will do i will put it under the feet of my jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah yes so this is this is the honor of the king when we put everything under the feet of jesus christ hallelujah 
This is the meaning of the branch. This is the meaning of the high things. This is the meaning of the clothes. Hallelujah. So Jesus, in Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 5 says, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. Only the righteous branch is Jesus Christ. And he shall reign as a king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. And Isaiah chapter 11 verse 1 says, There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his root shall bear fruit. Hallelujah! Glory to God! He is the branch who can give life. Jesus is the branch. Hallelujah. You can clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And my brothers and sisters, we are also the branches. We are also the branches. Chapter, uh, John chapter 15 verse 1 and 5. You know, you know this, this scripture. I am the true wine and my father is wine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. So we are branches. And Jesus needs these branches. Jesus wants to see these branches to be fruitful, to be prosper. Hallelujah. Hosanna. Hosanna to the highest. And as we um, saw this video, and as Pastor explained, as Pastor um, Don explained, that what is the meaning of Hosanna? We can say praise. We can say glory to God. And the meaning of Hosanna is also Lord, save us. Lord, save us. So people, those who were welcoming Jesus, they were saying, Lord, save us. They were reciting Psalm 118 because they, they were waiting for the, for the Messiah. And uh, they were welcoming. But the same people could not fully understood the meaning of Hosanna. And the same people, same people, in few days, they were saying, crucify him. Crucify him. Because they did not understood, understand the meaning of Hosanna. Today, if we are not understanding the meaning of Hosanna, then we sometime we also stand against Jesus by our actions. Hallelujah. So, that is the meaning of Hosanna. And you know, Jesus sent two disciples ahead of him. And he said that uh, you will find a donkey and a colt. And the donkey is tied. And uh, Jesus said that Jesus needs that donkey. Jesus, Jesus want, wanted to use him for his glory. 
sometime we as as i illustrated uh, about the um, the parachute sometime we are we are in 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 many things that stop stop us stepping forward to jesus christ and uh, two things two things i will describe the more powerful thing which which can stop us which can bind us one is busyness it's a very strong string which can bind us to be served in the house of the lord busyness oh i'm so busy i'm doing this i'm doing that i'm doing that and jesus said untie him and bring it to me sometime we we will have to see and we will have to cut this string of busyness from our life then we can go to jesus christ to be used hallelujah and another thing is one is busyness and one is laziness <laughs> one is busyness and one is laziness if man is free doing nothing but still he is busy still he is busy because he is tied with the laziness so two things these strings are very strong we should have to cut these two string busyness and laziness hallelujah then we can be used by lord jesus christ and we many people are tied with these two strings okay so jesus needs us and jesus said in uh, john chapter 15 verse 6 16 you did not choose me but i chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and your fruit should abide so whatever you ask the father in my name he may give it to you so jesus chose us but you must make yourself available and how you can make yourself available by cutting these two strings what are those strings busyness and laziness sometime we are very busy some we are we are very lazy so we should cut these strings okay so there are so many things to say but my brothers and sisters this palm sunday will be the different from the other palm sundays amen and those who are watching through the web i would request you to please if you have not given your life to jesus christ give your life make yourself available to jesus welcome the king of king into your life if you are under depression and anxiety many people in america they are they are destroying their life they are trying to kill themselves but if you surrender your life to jesus christ there will be different life a new life a joyful life 
and that joy i would say that nobody can steal from you hallelujah so i would like to invite pastor fink to come over oh okay so he has to go yes let us pray hallelujah hallelujah uh, i i would like you to stand up on your feet and uh, we will pray hallelujah praise lord praise lord praise lord hallelujah 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 father god we are so thankful for this beautiful event lord and father god we are so thankful for lord jesus christ who came into the world to save us to rescue us lord and father on this palm sunday we want to open our heart open our doors open our lives to receive the king of king into our life lord hosanna to the highest heavenly father come and we want to receive the peace which nobody can steal and especially those who are making commitment today in this congregation or through the web lord with this congregation we pray for them lord heavenly father those who have given their life to you lord holy spirit guide them bless them in the name of lord jesus christ hallelujah amen you may be seated we we'll say stand it what a great word about we are the branches i'm so thankful this morning the Bible says that for the joy that was set before Christ, he endured Calvary. I'm very moved this week because as my brother shared, so many in this nation have so much and yet they're very discouraged, hopelessness. I've been in nations where I was thinking this morning about Haiti. Back in the 80s, being in Haiti and uh, the poorest nation in the Western Hemisphere and people would literally make mud pies and eat the mud. And yet we have people in America, you got two and three TVs and cell phones and all the kind of things that people are looking for. And yet we don't find peace, even among Christians. There's only one way to peace. His name is Jesus. And we're praying for a renewal, for a revival of each of our faith today. It's one thing to know him, and I do know him. Anybody else know him today? But there's a very powerful prophetic word that which hinders the manifestation of God's power is being too busy and too lazy. Thank God it's not this church. It's that church down the road. That's where all the lazy, busy people are, not here. Hallelujah. So we want to close with one song. Somebody say Hosanna back here. Hosanna. Hosanna means? got one that knows it, okay, hallelujah. <laughs> She's been in church over 50 years, she finally got it, hallelujah. If you have your little palms, maybe we can wave them as we do this today, as a sign, hallelujah. So, so I'm going to ask you if you would give me uh, my tambourine right there. Let me turn it towards you. Can you give me that tambourine that's right there? Cause praise is so 
Hosanna. Don't forget this week to invite somebody. We'd like to invite you in the back to have some refreshment. If you need some prayer, we'll be down here this morning. Father, we thank you for the word of the Lord. That Jesus, once again, it was for the joy that was before you. You were the vine dresser. We are the branches. This day, Father, we further commit our life to the cause of Jesus Christ. Let thy kingdom come. Let thy will be done, O God, not only on earth, but in our families. We declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. Can you branches one more time give him a clap offering? Hallelujah. God bless you. I have been in church the last few weeks, but I haven't preached. But I tell you what, I've enjoyed myself. We have such great preachers in our church. But next week, I have a word for the Resurrection Sunday morning. And we'll be sharing it here tomorrow. Not tomorrow. I'll be at the City Mission tomorrow. So if you'd like to go to the City Mission down there, we'll be there at 545. But I will be on Facebook Wednesday and Friday with my wife. We've been trying to do a series on the faith of Abraham. We did Abraham. And three times we tried to do the life of Enoch. And every time, three times, the internet shut down. So, Jesus' name, Wednesday you'll be hearing Enoch about his life. And there's a miracle about his life. Well, God bless you. We will see you next week. If you'd like to have some fellowship or come down and have a word of prayer. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah.